right, so uh, I'm making a second take of this video because originally, you know, it didn't record the first take, but that's whatever. I just got done the interview with David Wilson, the former Giants running back and the rapper. Jordan Levine joined me for that one. Obviously, he was on Sportscaster. I will let you guys know when I actually come out with the video on YouTube. It's probably going to be on the All New York Sports uh, YouTube as well. Uh, but let's address what you guys are here for, and that's the recap. Giants lost 17-9 to to the Los Angeles Rams. That's the first time they went there in over 25 years, nearly 26. I'm not happy. I barely have any energy to express, but you know I'm going to do this because I feel like I need my words to come out of my mouth. And... You know, for you guys to hear me out on this one, other than just, you know, having it stale two days old and also, you know, just putting it over Twitter because, you know, Twitter is a whole fucking cesspool, especially after Giants losses, but it's whatever. Um, let's go with the positives and I'm going to evaluate from there. Defense held up well. They only allowed Jared Goff 200 yards. And, you know, the stats really look good from there 25 passes for 200 yards. That's 6.3. Per attempt. That's really good. You know, um, they're one of the most powerful offenses in the league. And the fact that we did this really helps us. He had a, um, obviously a better QBR and a better rating than uh, Daniel Jones. We'll get to that. And I'm not necessarily happy. But it's whatever. Uh, Bradbury was not targeted a lot. Continues to show up. Uh, Blake Martinez made a couple of key tackles and a couple of good hits. Bradbury going back to the uh, not targeted a lot. You know, he's shown up really well. Um, Dave Gettleman's going to really prove to, you know, oh, I can sign free agents. You know, he worked. Martinez worked. Fackrell showed up. It seems like every two games he likes to show up. Uh, got a sack. Got two key tackles. So, you know, it's good. Uh, the running game finally existed in the second half of the game. More like Goldman had a 26-yard carry. Goldman had six carries, 45 yards. Daniel Jones actually the same number, but his longest was a 13-yard carry. Devontae Freeman, 11 rushes for 33 yards. 10 uh, rushing yards was his longest on one play. Uh, Deion Lewis, the same thing, except he had one rush for 10 yards. Didn't get a lot of opportunities when it comes to the rushing game. CJ Board, one rush for three yards. So whether you decide to look at the stats, whether you decide to look at, I don't know, film. Uh, Giants had 25 carries for 136 rushing yards and 5.4 yards per carry, which is really good. You know, that's probably the best they've rushed all season. You know, they finally got the running game going a little bit. And, you know, not count Daniel Jones out. Let's see, 45, 33. Uh, that's 78, uh, 10, 88 rushing yards. So it's better than they've been. Um, but, you know, there still needs to be work done. Uh, I'm going to talk about that. Nick Gates is a fighter. Now, when I talk about that, you know, he sticks up for his team. He's the Will Hernandez, again. But a lot of Giants fans have more respect for Nick Gates than they do Will Hernandez because Hernandez has really disappointed in the last couple of weeks, including going back to last season because, you know, he didn't make that jump. And he's the 34th overall pick of the 2018 draft class. And, you know, a lot of people were saying, oh, you know, he's make the jump. We'll see where that goes. But uh, Nick Gates is a fighter. Do I really agree with him putting the hand in the face of Aaron Donald? No. But, you know, he fought the way he was supposed to fight. He fought at the end, and I'll get into that. Uh, he fought with Aaron Donald. You know, they're two good players. You know, whether you classify Nick Gates as a good center or a good right tackle, you know, that's yours to decide. But uh, he said, you know, we're both good players, and, you know, we're just, the emotions are there. Um, you know, Aaron Donald... He's not really a cheap shot guy. He's one of the most admirable in the league. He does a lot for the community. And he's the best player in football, probably. You know, it's emotions usually go spiral out. They usually spiral out. Uh, let's go to the negatives. A lot of them. Daniel Jones, through game winning interception, has not made a lot of good, bad decisions. So he's been mixed, uh, especially this game. Uh, forcing a couple throws. Uh, pocket awareness was not great. Uh, the offensive line gave a fucking four sacks, which I'm not happy about. That was in the first quarter, in the first half. It reminds me of that game against Atlanta when the offensive line did the same, and we couldn't come back, and our offense was still, and the defense was, you know, doing the best 
it could. Um, when I talk about Daniel Jones and that game-winning interception, he was trying to be the hero of his own story. He was trying to make himself bigger and carry the whole team when he really didn't need to do that. Um, he had open lanes in front of him to run, slide first down, or maybe even go into the end zone. But he wanted to be the hero of his own story. I'm not saying this is an ego thing, but he knows the situation he's in. But sometimes he has to make the decisions that, you know, are less of a risk and not, um, you know, that risky and more of a reward over a risk thing. And one of those throws, or I should say one of those plays, was that one. You know, when he threw it to Damian Ratley, was intercepted by Darius Williams. You know, that took all the energy out of me. That did. You don't make that throw. And, you know, it, you could have ran an extra two, three, four yards in front of you, and you could have had the first. Uh, Giants offensive line, they gave up four sacks in the first half. No bueno. Uh, Andrew Thomas didn't have a good day. Cam Fleming, the same. Uh, Zeitler had a couple of mixed results. Uh, Hernandez, the same thing. Uh, I have to go back and watch the film, obviously, so I can't necessarily make a good take on that one. Uh, they should have left Matt Purden. You know, I'm not for throwing players into the fire, whether you're developmental or uh, depending on your case, if you're a first or a second round pick. Uh, Pert looked really decent, I should say. You know, he didn't do horrible. He didn't do all-star. But there was a couple of plays where he did get beat in the line of scrimmage. He rebounded and he washed out and pushed the edge rusher, not into Daniel Jones, but to where, you know, it gave Daniel Jones more time to throw the football. And he did, you know, impress me on one of the run blocking plays. I think they only got like three yards or something on a play. I think Freeman was the rusher. I can't necessarily recollect right now, but I think you start Matt Pert next week. I'm sorry. You know, everybody's frightening. Oh my God, the Dallas defensive line. Yeah, they're clearly not doing anything if they're the, one of the worst defenses in the league. Let's be honest. They got blown out by the fucking Browns. Uh, the defense, um, they got ousted by Jared Goff. Uh, they lost, uh, I can't even think right now. But, you know, they won to the Falcons who can't hold a lead for shit. I don't remember the other opponent they played. Oh, well, that's right. They played the Seahawks. You know, they couldn't hold them either. So that was really interesting. I mean, their offense, yeah, they could be explosive. And I think we can hold them. But, you know, it's whether the offense will do anything. I think it's going to be one of those games where, or expectations, where you're going to have, you know, oh, the Giants can totally put up this many points on the Dallas defense. Yeah, no, they can't because, you know, the Giants are one of the worst offenses in the league, especially in the passing game. Uh, Daniel Jones had like 80 five passing yards is going into the half or actually less than that so i'm probably way off uh passing game was dull besides jones the pocket awareness receivers were not getting open and it was just dull there was no creativity at all uh garrett needs to get better at that i honestly think that you know he needs to fucking talk to garrett meaning joe judge um i know he's a first year head coach and you know garrett has more of an established resume but come the fuck on already this is the reason one of the reasons the team is fucking zero and four right now um, another one, Jalen, uh, Ramsey, Tate, I'll talk about that in about two minutes. Uh, also to note that on that play with Cooper Cup, uh, he ran an angle route and fucking Julian Love was assigned to covering him, to my estimation, zigzag fucking totally got juked and faked out. And he has not played the best football this season. And, you know, just making an impact play. Oh, great. We, you know, we can't go for a field goal now. I mean, regardless, the offense was terrible. Oh, great. And, you know, we were supposed to go for a field goal before to win the game. Now we got to go for eight points. So, and they weren't winning that game. Um, let's say they got a touchdown, two-point conversion. You know, they were not actually going to win the game by that. They would have to uh, stop the Rams on defense, go to overtime, see what happens. But uh, Julian Love, again, no bueno. I don't know necessarily if everyone missed Jabril Peppers, to be honest, because, you know, the defense actually held up pretty good. Uh, Ryan Lewis, you know, I'm not saying he's cornerback too, but I'm also saying he didn't do that bad. He didn't do that bad at all. I must say that. Isaac Yadon gave up two receptions, and I'm pretty sure they benched him from there. Darnay Holmes, he wasn't, you know, uh, Darnay Holmes the last three weeks. I'm going to say that. I mean, I would have to look at film, but... He wasn't where he was getting beat on this route, this route, this route, this route. You know, it wasn't an explosive offense. They got down the field. Yes, they uh, they had one field goal 
yes, I know that. But at the same time, you know, there was not really that many explosive plays. There wasn't. Yeah, getting the first down. Daryl Henderson, who was ranked the first best, you know, uh, running back by Pro Football Focus. Uh, let's take a look at how many yards he got today. 22 yards on 8 rushes. That's 2.8 yards per carry. So I guess, you know, that went into the fucking trash. The rushing game, uh, both defensively and offensively, was good. The passing game on the defense was pretty good as well. Going for the positives. Uh, Ramsey and Tate, let's talk about this. So uh, at the end of the game, shaking hands, obviously some turned scrum. Now, obviously, social media is going to be that way, and the beat reporter is going to be that way just to make a bigger story. Uh, they're going to record only the fight and not what led to it. So... Uh, I didn't get a chance to, you know, see what fully happened. I saw the middle of it. Nick Gates in there, Golden Tate in there, Jalen Ramsey in there, a couple coaches in there. You know, it was ugly. Uh, if Jalen Ramsey started it, he should get a fine. He should get a fucking suspension. Um, you know, I'm not salty because the Giants lost. I'm salty, not really. Uh, Jalen Ramsey is known for doing this. And, you know, the league likes to uh, sit back and watch. They like to make their money. They like to watch players beat up on their own players knowing their ratings will go down. And, you know, Jalen Ramsey, yeah, he's a good corner when he's not fucking punching somebody in the face. Uh, let's let's put it that way. Uh, he's very cheap shoddy. He goes for the cheap hits. He's Vontez Perfect number two in the making. Um, maybe Miles Garrett. You know, again, I'm not salty uh, because the Giants lost. Um, he's just generally not a good fucking person. You know, he plays dirty. He plays dirty. And he makes how many million dollars a year, and he got out of Jacksonville scot-free. So, you know, that's a point of emphasis to make on that. Um, another thing I want to mention, part of that, Tate started it. Look, uh, if any of you don't know, Golden Tate's sister was impregnated by Ramsey, and Ramsey left, to my understanding at least. You know, Ramsey left them for the dead, and Tate wasn't necessarily happy about that. Look, you got to leave that stuff off the field, man. Unless Ramsey says some shit to you, you have to leave that stuff off the field. You're older than Ramsey. Uh, you are more mature than Ramsey. Yeah, you have beef with people, but you gotta leave that off the field. And, you know, as much as everybody, you know, likes to rip Golden Tate, oh, you know, uh, him starting a fight was, you know, no culture, uh, culture, oh, yeah, well, they're fighting. You know what? You have to realize, you know, if it was some player nobody's ever heard of or some player that, you know, is known for a good reputation, um, Golden Tate was fighting. I said, okay, you know, Golden Tate may have started it. But we know what Jalen Ramsey is capable of. Nobody should be surprised. Um, you know, see what the NFL does on this. Uh, likely, I'm going to say that they give Golden Tate more of a suspension. Um, I just feel that way. I just feel that the NFL is going to do that. Uh, both should be suspended, maybe. Um, how long, we'll see. I think it's going to be like a one-two game thing. Maybe a fine because of the COVID restrictions. But, you know, if Ramsey started it, he should get suspended more. Honestly. League knows what's happened with this. League knows, you know, um, what Ramsey is as a corner, what he is as a player, what he is as a bastard cheap shotter. Uh, this played into it. This played into it. Um, so, you know, jokes nowhere. Jokes nowhere, um, for lack of better words. You know, everybody knows what Jalen Ramsey is about. He's a high-paid corner, he's a shit talker, and he's a cheap shotter. I mean, did he play good today? Yeah, he did. When he wasn't fucking throwing golden tea to the ground and arguing and fucking getting in the faces of people uh, that really didn't need to happen. So, um, I'm going to move on to the Daniel Jones, Trevor Lawrence topic now. Um, I understand a lot of Giants fans' frustration. Oh, Daniel Jones is not doing this. Yeah, I'm going to call him on that. And I did earlier. You know, he's not making the right decisions. He hasn't played well in the last couple of games. Um, number one, recognize the situation. Uh, I'm not saying, oh, uh, offensive line. You know, I'm not saying, you know, everything's on the offensive line, the wide receiving core. Wide receiving core uh, is often overlooked. And I've said this the last couple of years. I've said it in one of my videos, you know. Uh, every Giant fan was freaking out when PFF said, you know, the 21st wide receiver ranking. Yeah, because they can't get it done when, you know, uh, they have these big attractive guys at the position. Uh, especially with OBJ, you know, in the past, 2017, what the fuck was that? You know, all of them got injured. Even before that, the offense couldn't do anything. So, you know, I don't know what people were freaking out about. Um, this was kind of expected. But going back to my main point, you know, recognize the situation. 
You know, when y'all thinking about this Trevor Lawrence thing, would he do good with a bad offensive line? Would he do good with the receiving core that's lackluster? You know, um, my opinion, you know, everybody's saying, oh, get Panay Sewell, uh, the tackle at Oregon next year. I don't believe in that. I don't believe that we should. Is he an attractive guy? Is, you know, in the case that he plays good football? Yeah. I mean, he opted out this season, so we won't know, uh, you know, what he does this season. We'll have to look at the 2020, actually 2019 tape. But my point is, you know, Matt Pert, give him a chance. Give him a fucking chance. You know, what's it with, you know, all making these, you know, a tr- uh, you know, big name players first round? You know, it doesn't always enter that, especially in the NFL. Everybody models the Cowboys offensive line. You really shouldn't all the time. And they're starting to deteriorate, to be honest. You know, I guess it's the Columbo effect. I guess it's Lyle Collins being out for the season. I don't know. But you look at Shaq Mason, who's one of the best guards in the NFL right now, and he was drafted in the fourth round. It's the player they become. It's the player that, you know, how they adjust to the NFL. It's also, um, let's see, the coaching. So let's think of that. You know, before you all start assuming, oh, Panay Sewell, you know, let's get him. You know, I'm not ripping you that you want an attractive name, but realize what you have on your roster and don't just waste Matt Perp. Don't do that my opinion that's just my take on it i'm not gonna sit here and rip everybody's you know take and whatnot but i'm just saying realize what you have on your roster and the potential they could be because pert looked really good today um decent if you want to put it that way but you know and i'm gonna make a point about tanking real quick look at the dolphins and the raiders compare them to the ravens and patriots a couple of years and the saints too um two prime Teams actually, I'm going to say, is actually the Ravens and the Saints. So, you look at the Dolphins, the Raiders, 2019, 2018. 2018, the Raiders tanked. 2019, the Dolphins tanked. So, they got draft picks. Uh, Dolphins are currently in the second year of the rebuild, third year for the Oakland Raiders. Does anyone go out there? Does anyone see that uh, the Raiders are up to where the Chiefs are, where the Ravens are, where the Saints would be if they didn't suck? They're not up there. And, you know, I did have the Raiders possibly going as a wild card team. That's because it's the expectation. And getting draft picks, knowing not who you're going to draft, and just drafting for need never fucking works. You know, it could, but it just doesn't work sometimes. And, you know, everyone was saying, oh, uh, the Dolphins defense is going to be good. Uh, No more Patrick Graham. You know, they got Kyle Van Noy, Byron Jones. Yeah, that defense obviously is not winning them games. I, you know... I would have to look and see the teams they face, uh, what their offensive styles like, or the rankings, the defensive rankings. But obviously, I don't know that it's much of an impact to where the Jets can or can't beat them. My point is, you know, and if you take a look at the Saints, you know, they were bad for a couple of years. You know, seven and nine, six and ten. If they went to their record, you know, I don't have the certain statistics on me. Uh, with Joe Flacco in the last couple of years, the Ravens were not a good football team. They were decent at best and they built through getting their draft picks by not fucking tanking they made the right decisions they scouted in the front office unless i'm saying something wrong you know they didn't tank they're not cheating the system they're like evaluating they're evaluating who they're gonna draft what's on their board and what they need to get not drafting for need, but, you know, evaluating the best player possible in that position. That's the difference between Gettleman and Jerry Reese. Some of you don't agree with Gettleman's draft picks, okay. But, you know, like Dave Gettleman said, whether he's done the correct evaluation along with the front office and the scouting department, you have to take the best player possible. Now, uh, let's see. Um... One of the first picks uh, Dolphins made, and I felt this was a re. If you want to watch my draft recap, um, you know my live stream. Austin Jackson out of USC was their 17th overall pick, if I'm not mistaken. I thought it was a reach. Has he played good? Uh, probably not. But you know, you don't draft for need. You draft for the best players. If you know, if there's a player that you like, you need. Okay, but. Um, there's different types of evaluations, and tanking is not one of them. So uh, to finally assess this and to finally like get it off the board, is tanking really going to help making your fan base miserable? 
putting your coach through a lot of hell with, you know, the record because, you know, he's going to be losing games. And just for a quarterback that, you know, may or may not be good in the NFL, I don't know. But a lot of Giants fans are walking around like a fucking chicken with their heads cut off and saying, oh, tank for Trevor. Yeah, we're going to tank because, you know, the fans that want to win and want to see progression are not going to get it because they fucking uh, want to win and, you know, other Giants fans want to lose. So, you know, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. It doesn't make a lot of sense. And um, I was never for tanking. Um, I think it's a way of cheating the system. You know, draft lottery really prevents that, to be honest with you. Um, do I think a draft lottery is okay for these two sports that I like, MLB and NFL? No. I don't like the draft lottery, but it prevents teams from tanking. And I think tanking is cheating in one way, but if you're evaluating, fine. It's just my thing on it, but I don't think the Giants are a team that would tank. Unlike the Jets, you know, fucking rebuilding for the past 60 fucking years, the teams, you know, the long time you've been existing, but, you know, with the Giants, I'm not saying go out there, sign 700 free agents. I'm not saying, you know, accumulate draft picks through tanking. Just, you know, the front office needs to be better at evaluating. And, you know, something needs to be done. Change needs to be done. Uh, evaluation needs to be done. And that's that. That's how you fix this football team. But you don't do it through fucking tanking. You need a quarterback. If you don't need a quarterback, you wait to see what your pick is. And you say, okay, uh, we like this guy. We like that guy. You don't just go out there and say, oh, no, tank for Trevor. Uh, we'll take him. No. Because if you don't like a quarterback, if you don't like a person in general when it comes to play, you're not going to be taking them. And if you take somebody you don't like, then you're going to be fucking up with yourself for the next couple of years. And you're going to be fucking your organization. I'm cursing a lot in this video, yes, but you know a lot of Giants fans have me mad. And it's just the concept. Just the friggin' concept. Uh, anyway, thank you guys for supporting. Um, the David Wilson interview should be out probably tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, you know. Uh, I don't know if I'll have time tonight to upload it because I have to do a couple things, including this recap. Uh, thank you, guys. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, follow our social media pages, Twitter, Instagram, Big Blue in the Bronx. Uh, podcast available on Spotify, Podbean, Amazon Music, all the other podcast platforms. Uh, we'll talk about this on Tuesday. But it looks like three days in a row you're going to be getting videos from this channel. Today, obviously the recap. Uh, tomorrow, obviously, the David Wilson interview, and Tuesday's the podcast episode. So thank you guys for uh, supporting. Thank you guys for watching, whoever did. Uh, hopefully, we get a Yankees win on Monday, tomorrow, but I really want a Giants win this week. We'll see what happens with that, and we'll evaluate. Thank you guys, and we will see you on Tuesday.